Hey guys, so let's talk about the GDP. What happened uh, when they disclosed the GDP results? Everyone knows that it's bad, but let's drill down on it as well. So uh, this video will focus on the latest disclosure of the GDP. As you all know already, uh, the first quarter GDP resulted in negative 0.2%. So that means we contracted. I was literally in a Bloomberg slash One News Network interview while they announced the results and they gave the breakdown into everything but i know this is not the most optimistic time to be able to talk about the gdp and if you've been following me for quite some time i'm, I'm very excited every time they would announce a gdp because uh it's it, especially in 2013 14 15 16 the gdp of of the philippines was zooming and we were one of the fastest growing economies in our region however uh just to be real this is where we are right now. So I, I will make this as realistic as possible. I'll make this also something that uh, somehow I'll, I'll do my best to be able to uh, convey what are you supposed to do because at the end of the day, when it comes to investing in the stock market, it's all about looking at the data, analyzing it, and taking it and fit, uh, seeing how does this fit towards your buy and sell signals because as you all know uh, things like this are all cyclical uh, drops in the economy are cyclical if it happened in, in the past it will happen again there's no such thing as an economy that goes up forever there will be times like this and there are black swan events like what's happening right now because of the coronavirus that bring economies down so for this video Again, I'm going to talk about the historical GDP. We're going to break down the GDP as well. Then my reaction into all of this, uh, why on the on the Philippine GDP uh, dropping massively. Then we're also going to talk about uh, projections or where the GDP will be for 2020. Then the stock market impact. So especially for those who are excited about how this, not excited, but those of you guys who are invested in the stock market, those of you who have mutual fund, UITF investments, I'm Hopefully, you stay till the end so you get to see how this impacts and my take on the market and all of this. By the way, uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Marvin Germo and I'm a stock market trader and investor. I have a, I have a YouTube channel with over 105,000 subscribers and the goal and the heart of this channel basically is to teach you, to educate you, to show you that... Uh, when you invest based on information, based on uh, the right rudiments, you will get to decide properly. And at the end of the day, all I can do is just feed you with as much information as possible so you can make the right decision with your money because that's all I want. I want this channel to help you guys. So if you're new to this, super appreciate it if you can subscribe and smash that bell so you get updated every time I come up with new content about investing, about the stock market. And if there's anything in this video that appeals to you, I would appreciate it if you could press the like slash thumbs up button so the YouTube algorithm shows this video more and more and more and more to everyone that's so interested about investing. Let's make investing so important. And just to before I continue, I opened up a second channel. It's called Marvin Germo Podcast. Uh, all of the non-stock market content will be placed there. And for those who want to attend, I have a a webinar with Sean C. It will be May 15, 2020. Uh, it's again, business and investing. It's about how we get out of this crisis and how do you use business and investing to be able to help you so the link is in the description for this and this as well so back to the topic at hand uh, GDP shrinks down to negative 0.2 and here's the thing I wanna for those who are not really into finance uh, please do know this this is the this is the textbook definition of what GDP is or the gross domestic product so it's a total value of goods produced and produced and services provided in a country during one year. So if you remember it, this is something that was taught to us when we were younger. GDP is Gawatito, Pilipinas. So any of the goods that were produced in the Philippines and any of the services provided by the Philippines during uh, 2020, that's what's measured for the GDP. And uh, one way also to look at the GDP is there's a formula for it on how it gets uh, how it gets basically computed. Now, there's what you call there's what you call an ex expenditure approach. For the expenditure approach, this is basically the formula GDP equals C plus G plus I plus 
uh, and next C is basically consumption, uh, uh, private consumption. When we when we talk about the Philippines as a consumption driven economy, every time that they say that, every time we hear that in an interview, uh, that's what it's actually depicting. So this includes everything you know, from uh, durable goods, non durable goods, food and clothing that gets consumed. That's your C portion of the GDP. Then the G part. This is where when we talk about build, build, build. Why? Uh, Everything that's government expenditures is included in G, so salaries of their employees, uh, construction, repair, military, everything. So when you look at everything that gets built uh, from uh, from uh, from build, 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 uh, it's part of the G portion of the GDP. So when that when you hear interviews that say the government wants to uh, pump up the GDP by by constructing more, that's the G portion of. Uh, that's a G portion of of the GDP. Then you have I. It's basically just investments uh, for equipment, inventory, and housing. So just to make it simple, C is consumption, G is government spending, I is investments, then NX is net ex net exports, meaning you rem all of the exports and remove all of the imports. That's your net export. So just just so you know when we start talking about it and so you already have an idea no just from this formula alone you already have an idea that hmm because of what's happening consumption is weaker that's why you have an ideology that hey the gdp is obviously weaker for the first quarter because consumption is massively weaker already i'm going to talk more about that a bit in a bit but there's another way to to be able to determine the gdp it's not part of the slides already but it's called uh it's it's using the income approach naman of of determining it so i'm just going to say the formula here you can research it on your own but it's basically the total national income plus sales sales taxes plus depreciation plus net foreign factor income so that equals the G gdp so that's from the income approach naman Anyways, uh, as, as you all know, I started it off that the first quarter GDP is at 0.2%. Uh, if you look at it, the median estimate by a lot of the analysts, when you average the most optimistic, the most pessimistic was 2.9. So as you can see, 2.9 is way, 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 way far than the actual figure. So this is something that all intents and purposes is not is not factored in by majority of the economists is not factored in by majority of the analysts everyone would please remember 2.9 percent is something that's very very low we we never we were around five six percent over the past two years we were above seven percent over the past five years so having a 2.9 median estimate is already very very low but the fact that we contracted the fact that our gdp was lower shows us that we are in deep trouble economically as of today so please remember I'm, I'm not saying that this is going to be forever but i'm saying that as of today we're not where we want to be and just to give you some statistics this was the first contraction of our gdp since 1998 i think this was the fourth quarter of 1998 where uh if you remember, that was a time that we had the Asian financial crisis. There was an El Nino drought that hit our economy massively. So if you look at it from that perspective, uh, after 22 years, we're declining again. We're, we're contracting, meaning instead of the economy moving and growing, it's getting smaller. So if you look at it from a business aspect, instead of the business growing, instead of it earning more, it actually earned less. This is a this is the GDP uh, growth from trading economics. So if as you can see here, we were consistent. If you look at it from uh th from this period, we were even above six plus percent, above six plus percent. Then we started to dip somewhere here. Then consistently above six. Then we dipped a bit, but this was around the five percent. Then boom, suddenly below zero, negative. So breaking it down as what I said, no, uh, in terms of the breakdown of the GDP, uh, from the supply side, you have services at 1.4%, you have agriculture negative 0.4%, and you have industry from the supply side also at negative 3%. So not so rosy even at, from the agriculture uh, perspective. Please remember, one of the re one of the problems also from the agriculture side was uh, there's something that they could supply, but because of the lockdown also, uh, it kind of hampered them bringing it to Metro Manila, which is, I think Metro Manila is 70 plus percent of our GDP. I, I, I don't have the exact statistics with me, but if Metro Manila is locked down, there's a big impact on all of the suppliers that want to bring stuff 
inside and of course it will impact people that wanted to consume it as well from the demand side uh, household consumption as you already know uh, from from what I showed you in the formula for the GDP uh, let me show you again here consumption I already said at the start that it's gonna be weak uh, it's at 0.2 percent it <laughs> it all intents and purposes, 0 point is close to it being flat. So you could actually say that it barely didn't grow. Government expenditures. And I think if we really want to push the economy further this year, this government expenditure uh, segment should continue to grow. So it's 7.1% capital formation, uh, negative 18.3%. Exports negative 3%. Imports negative 9%. So things are not so good, but what's my reaction into all of this? As you all know, I mentioned that I'm going to give you what my reaction is and what my take is. So basically, uh, number one, and as you as you know me, I'm very logical uh, in, in everything that I do. I try as much as possible not to have emotions in my investments, uh, and I try as much as possible to keep me from being emotional to just put a specific amount of money so that even if markets fluctuate markets drop or we have bad times i'm relatively okay so my take in all of this is this is somewhat expected uh please this was somewhat expected everyone already knew it i already knew it that the gdp won't be as good uh it would be close to zero it would be flat it would be negative or even if it's not negative it won't be high growth for 2020 for sure is out of the picture already we cannot expect growth for 2020 uh and please remember this is just the first quarter of the year i want to say this very very clear the lockdown was mid-march so basically if there's any problem in our gdp for mid-march uh, from mid-March to the end of March because of the lockdown, you only had two weeks out of 12 weeks and that had a large impact already on how our GDP was. Please remember also that uh, one of the things that somehow contributed to this was early this year, the Al Volcano erupted, meaning a large chunk of whatever was happening in the Calabar Zone area got hit. Uh, businesses got hit, uh, manufacturing got hit, supply chain got hit, people lost jobs, people became less productive. So the Taal, uh, the Taal, the Taal volcano eruption already was was supposed to be a dampener for our economy, but now it's not the worst thing that caused it to go lower. But I wanted to say that and remember this. I mentioned that the second uh, that the second half of March was one of the biggest pushes for the economy to. Uh, because of because the lockdown happened at the second part of March, but I want to mention this. Uh, even before the lockdown, you you already felt it. Eh? No one was watching movies. No one was going to malls. Uh, a lot of my I had a flight to Taiwan on February, but it got canceled. I was supposed to go to Hong Kong on March, uh, early March, but it got canceled. I had several flights locally that got canceled as well. So the reason why I'm saying this is prior to the lockdown, because of the coronavirus, a lot of people were not consuming. A lot of people were not going out anymore. A lot of people were not eating out. A lot of people were not transacting. Tourism was already down. Airlines were already refunding tickets. There were certain areas that got locked down already, meaning there were certain portions of the economy, even though we were not in lockdown, that were already taking a hit. There were weddings that got canceled. There were events that got canceled. There were concerts that got canceled, so on and so forth. So meaning, it does not mean that the lockdown was that the lockdown was instituted March 15 that the effects of the coronavirus was not felt I, re I repeat even before the lockdown there were a lot of industries and sectors already that got massively hit so uh, what do I think may happen next and uh, this is not I've been I've made over 1400 videos and you know me I'm an optimistic guy but I just want to be real to all of you so that you get to plan and you get to do uh, work with your finances very very well. If you think uh, the March uh, the first quarter GDP was bad, I believe that the second and third quarter of 2020 will be even worse. So please note, literally March, mid March to the end of March, 
then you have the whole of April, and we are now at the first half of May. The whole country, the economy was closed, with the exception of some basic essentials, with the exception of some necessities uh, that we need to eat, uh, we, with, with, we need to uh, normally operate electricity, telecommunications, data, water, uh, food, everything else. Is not is not get is closed. Everything else is not doing so well. So, why am I saying this? Even if the lockdown gets lifted, May fifteen, you will see and you will experience that this is actually deeper than what we're actually projecting it to be. Why? Unless there's a cure, unless there's a vaccine, you will see a lot of people still not eat out. You will see people who have businesses that got hit may not be able to pay for their loans. You will see people that were planning to buy cars and houses that may defer it because they would need the cash as of the day. You would see OFWs that, because this is a global crisis, this is a global pandemic, you will see a lot of OFWs that will be sent home and won't have cash. And please remember, remittances are around 30 slash 31 billion US dollars and it's projected to drop by 20% to 24 billion. 24 billion is still a large amount of money, but that 6 billion that should have been here won't be here. And that could have been a house, that could have been a car, that could have been a business, that could have been people buying food in Shakey's, in Jollibee, in Dunkin' Donuts, in Greenwich, in McDonald's, in KFC. We're going to an SM mall, doing this, doing that, going to a Shangri-La hotel, enjoying, spending. But because of that, it's not going to be there. So that's my take on it. I think it will be much worse because the economy was close, is currently closed, and you don't see a lot of people uh, transacting and spending. But then again, if you watch my previous videos, there will be certain parts of the economy, there will be certain businesses that will continue to thrive in, in all of this. So how is the market responding? How is the PSEI in all of this? Before that, quick plug, I have five books. For those who want to know about the basics of the stock market, this first book is all about that stock investing made easy. Then for those who want to learn fundamental analysis, I have winning strategies for investing and stress-free investing. Winning strategies also is a bit of technical analysis. For those who want to learn charting, this invest this book, Breaking the Resistance, is all about technical analysis. Then I have this book, Where Should You Invest? Uh, it's the prequel to all of this. It tackles all of the other investments that are above and beyond the stock market. It talks about financial planning. So if there's one book you want to focus on first, try this. But th these are the other topics for the other books that I created. All of these are in Shopee. Uh, it's in the link in the description below, so you can click it. Shopee delivers to majority of the places ready in the Philippines. They're back. But if your area is not covered by Shopee, there's another link beside the Shopee link. You can click that also. Uh, hopefully, they get to deliver right after the lockdown. Uh, it also includes international deliveries as well. Then, uh, online course, Chinkitan, Tagalog, Stock Market, online course. For, for those who want to learn about the basics of the stock market in Tagalog, Link is in the description below. Then I have another online course with uh, Sean C. It's called Make Money, Grow Money. It's the basics of business entrepreneurship, how to start your own business and how you can invest in the stock market. And also another uh, Zoom. And we're trying something new via Zoom. It's called Breakthrough the, Through the Crisis. Uh, it's all about investing and business also during times like this, during times of crisis. So it's me and Sean C. Uh, on those videos as well. Now, back to my question. How is the market responding? Uh, if you've been following all of my videos, this is how the PSEI is. As you can see, even though uh, they disclosed the, a lower GDP, a lot of people somehow were already expecting it. So even if the GDP results came out, uh, you didn't really see a large deep dive. It doesn't mean that the market is not yet bearish. We are still bearish. But over... Uh, over the past month, we are a bit sideways. I repeat, we are still consolidating. Uh, we are sideways. We are in a month's period of consolidation. So we are consolidating in the lows. 20-day moving average is confirming our sideways move. The fact that it hasn't really broken out already for more than a month confirms the sideways move. Uh, resistances, as of this point in time, 
is 5707. The next one is the 5957 level. So until that moves up, until that pushes up, there's an expectation that until we break past those resistances, we can't really see the market push up and push higher. Now, it goes to the question, uh, but ganon, bad GDP, it should have gone lower. It goes back to what I've been saying in the previous vlogs. The stock market is a forward-looking market. Before things happen in the GDP, before things happen uh, in any of the economic cycles, the market anticipates it first. That's why a lot of people uh, move based on anticipation, move based on forecast, because that's how the market is. It's really emotion-driven. So you see this large drop here last March. That was the anticipation that because of the coronavirus, that was the anticipation because of the lockdown, that the economy would go bad. So this large drop is the anticipation already of what is about to happen. This sell-down is the market saying that, hey, the coronavirus, hey, the lockdown, because of that, nothing's going to happen to the economy for the year. So the, the bounce that we're seeing is what I've mentioned. This is irrational. This is people bottom picking out of this irrationality. So the what we're seeing here right now is the a lack of catalyst that's causing people to buy higher. A lack. There's nothing exciting. There's no. There's no glimmer of hope yet as of now, in any of in the GDP in uh in any of the results of the companies as you've noted. I I'll try to make a video on MPI and other the other companies that gave out results. No, uh, a lot of their Results are not growing. A lot of their a lot of their income, Q1 income is not something that's very, very fruitful. So until we see all of those, until we see any significant moves there, until we see better income, better results, I guess there's nothing I guess there's nothing that will cause people to buy higher. Now, should you be scared? I want to note this that uh the country has a very, very good central bank. We, ha we have a very, very stable currency. The peso is very, very strong. We have one of the best central banks in the world right now. So, And I, I say that with all conviction that when this is over, of course, it will take some time before everything gets fixed. But when this is over, uh, Ren Agawa on a previous video said this. You can watch that. That the reason why it's down, it's not because the companies mismanaged the company. There were, that there was something wrong on how they handled the business. This is a black swan event. So this will pass. This will recover. It will take some time though for some companies. It will take some time though for some industries. But again, this is the time that you have to be selective on your picking. There will be winners. There will be losers. But... We will come back at a certain point in time. Uh, there's a big argument whether it will be U-shape or V-shape. Regardless of the shape, it will always come back. As what I've said in previous videos that uh, recessions happen, markets drop, economies drop. If, the, if I've been saying that over and over, what I want to stress also today is that economies also rebound. Markets also go back. Markets would bounce. Markets would recover. So what I guess one of the things that you should ask yourself is this. Are you coming in when there's still fear, knowing that it's going to rebound soon and you just have to wait? Or are you going to wait now, be in cash because there's still uncertainty, and come in later on when all of the fear is gone, but you're buying it at a higher price? So there, we're at the 24-minute mark. I hope you guys are learning from this. Just some final words. And the reason why I'm making this video is that I really don't want you guys to be scared. I don't want you guys to be frightened. I just want you guys to have a practical and a real approach to what's really happening in the economy. And I want, I want to end with this. Don't let the economy dictate your future, that you work so hard, you hustle so hard, you save so hard, you invest so hard, you prepare so hard that good economy, you're doing well, bad economy, you're still doing well, that you can thrive in the midst of crisis, that you can thrive when everyone's scared, that in crisis, you will do well. 
please remember, if you hustle hard, you work harder than everyone else, you do what you can, you try to win, you try to leverage, you try to invest, you try to learn, you will always come out a winner. I'll say this over and over. Do not let the economy define how your bank account is. Do not let the economy define how productive you will be. You cannot control the economy, but you can control your effort. You can control your hustle. You can control the amount of money that you start to invest. You can control the amount of time that you spend trying to learn use this time use this crisis to take you places to take you higher to make you win use this crisis that instead of falling back you push forward instead of being scared you be aggressive and i hope that you win did you guys learn a lot we are the 25 minute mark comment below if you stayed up until this time if you if there's anything that you picked up on this I'd like to hear your thoughts. Please put them on the comment section. Things that you've learned, things that you've never heard before, things that you heard before but got reinforced now, things that helped you, things that added value to you. Please put them in the comment section. And if this video is helping you, appreciate it, guys. If you can uh, like it, if you can put a thumbs up. I really want to see a vid, uh, an economic video hit 1,000 likes. I, I know it's never been done before, but uh, I, I just really want financial information financial literacy to be something that's uh that's popular in the philippines and uh if you appreciate this and you want to help this out uh please press the thumbs up button because it helps the youtube algorithm show this to more and more filipinos and again my books and again super appreciate it if you could subscribe if you have not subscribed yet these are my two channels. This is the main channel where it's all about the stock market. And this is my other channel, Marvin Germa Podcast, where it's about investing, about uh, saving money, about success stories, about making your first million, making your 10 million, about insurance, about budgeting, how you preserve cash, about OFWs trying to make money. And then all of the online courses that I've mentioned uh, throughout the course of this video. So that's it. I hope you guys got a lot. I hope that this is something that uh, helped you and this is something that added tremendous value to all of you guys as well there's gonna be two videos that's gonna pop up here you can opt to watch those videos as well if you want to you want to continue to learn more and again that's all i want i just want you guys to continue to learn and do more so that's it for now this is marvin germo i hope this video helps you trade well trade strong trade smart see you all again soon guys and god bless you all